مرحبا بكم جميعا وحياكم الله في هذه الورشة التفاعلية سعداء جدا بمشاركتكم في برنامجنا التدريبي الذي ننظمه في هيئة أبوظبي للطفولة المبكرة بالتعاون مع شركانا نسعى في هيئة أبوظبي للطفولة المبكرة إلى دعم مسيرة التنمية الشاملة للأطفال وتعزيز رفاهيتهم منذ فترة الحمل وحتى سن الثامنة وضمان نموهم في بيئة داعمة وآمنة وتعزز وصولهم لموارد وأدوات إبداعية ومبتكرة وحصولهم على خدمات متكاملة وذات جودة عالية تساهم في تطوير مهاراتهم وتحسين قدراتهم لذلك نحن حريصين على تمكين شركانا وتعزيز قدراتهم لدعم التنمية الشاملة للطفل هذا البرنامج تم تصميمه خصيصا للعاملين في قطاع التعليم المبكر والحضانات بهدف إثراء خبراتكم تنمية مهاراتكم في مجالات الطفولة المبكرة وصولا لتحسين جودة التعليم وتحقيق رفاهية أحبتنا الأطفال من خلال التركيز على أربعة مجالات رئيسية هي الصحة والتغذية، حماية الطفل، الدعم الأسري إلى جانب الرعاية والتعليم المبكرين نتمنى لكم مشاركة ممتعة ومفيدة ومداخلات ترية وقيمة ونتطلع للالتقاء بكم مجددا في برامجنا المستقبلية نشكركم مرة أخرى على حضوركم ومشاركتكم ونثمن لكم جهودكم في تنمية ورعاية أحبتنا الأطفال Hello and welcome everybody to today's session. Before we start, I would like to thank ECA, ADIC, MOE, and Charge Educational Council for helping us put this together. Today's trainer is Shamila, and she'll be assisting us in understanding and how to make maths more fun. Hi, Shamila. Hi, Rafi. Hello. Hi, I can't seem to get myself onto video. It's saying that you it's stopped me from coming onto video. Yeah. It's fine. So, um, yeah, I can't. It says you've stopped me from coming onto video. Should I carry on with that? Yes, please. Yeah, not a problem. Okay, hi and good evening. Rafi, how are you doing? Very good. Good. Hi, everyone, and good evening. So um, I'm just going to kick right into it. Is that okay, Rafi? I'm just going to carry on? Yes. Yeah, brilliant. Thank you. So um, just a quick few comments just before I start. You've been put placed onto mute just to ensure that there's no interference or background noise whilst presentation is taking place. This will ensure that you all have a, a clear listening experience and there's no interference in between. There's a chat function as well that, that can be used um, to ask questions. Any questions that we're not being able to ask uh, answer during the session will be downloaded after the session, and common questions will be answered on the forum as well. So you do have an opportunity for that too. Um, there's a forum uh, where you can go after the session to discuss and ask questions, and it can be accessed by www.kindley.ae forward slash forum. And you will also be able to get this link. I think you received the link via um, email during your registration confirmation. Um, after the session, there'll also be a test your knowledge. Uh, receive an email with a code to access an online assessment. Um, and you also can have uh, the opportunity to go onto the question and answer section of the website. And there you'll find answers to the commonly asked questions on the topic. All sessions are recorded and available to watch in English, Arabic, and subtitled in Hindi. So that's that one. I'm just going to move right on to the session, if I can change. Yeah. So today we're speaking about making maths fun. And there's a few things that we're going to cover. So I'm hoping that at the end of this session, we'll be able to support you to be more confident when promoting mathematical learning in your sessions uh, uh, for you to be able to plan hands-on play-based methods of mathematical learning and to encourage engagement in maths with young children. Um, we would we'd like to support you on learning how to introduce mathematical concepts, which will provide the foundations for children's further development by using concrete resources and to use everyday opportunities to promote mathematical talk and understanding and also to, for a chance for you to reflect on your maths resources and your learning environments in your settings and to, for you to think and consider what changes you'd like to make in order to promote 
most mathematical talk, interest and curiosity within your children in a fun way. Um, for learning outcomes for you at the end of the session, we want you to become more confident in effectively incorporating maths opportunities within the classroom setting in a play-based environment. We would like you to understand the importance of taking into consideration the stages of development of your children when deciding what kind of activities to present in your environment. This is really important because everyone, uh, as teachers, you'll be teaching different age groups and it's important to understand what the stages of development are for each of those age groups so you're able to plan accordingly. Um, and to be able to implement a range of strategies to promote the love of maths in children. And this is the main reason we're here today, to make maths fun for you and for the children more than ever. Um, and we know that consistency, positive reinforcement and joined up approach with parents is the key to supporting maths in fun way. So we'll talk also about how we can introduce a concept of maths for parents to use the approach at home, again, to keep that bridge consistent um, and the love for maths alive. Um, last week I spoke about STEM and those are the four concepts in STEM were science, technology, engineering and maths. Today the focus is on maths, so we'll be focusing, as I said, um, how to make maths fun. Duncan et al. 2007 has, has claimed that early maths skills are important, predictors of later success in school in both reading and maths, so it's very important for children to enjoy and have a love of maths for them to be able to move on to school in a confident way. Um, talking about maths is also important and every bit of math talk helps. So lots of mathematical vocabulary, which I will be um, touching on through the, um, through the, more, through the evening um, and what kind of language you can use during your conversations with children to encourage maths. As we, research has indicated that even the, the small increase in math talk, such as asking about how many objects it will be if we add one, maybe take one away, example, um, brings great big results. So we really do want to incorporate lots of vocabulary that's maths orientated uh, to ensure your children are making the most of their interactions with you. So um, as I mentioned, it's really important for you to understand the ages and stages of mathematical development for the children that you're looking after. Um, children can start learning mathematics the moment they start exploring the world. Each skill from identifying shapes, counting and finding patterns, building of what they already know. There are certain math milestones, as we've mentioned, and most children hit them at roughly the same age, but it's okay if they don't. Um, every child is unique, as we know, every child will develop on different stages, but we do need to know an average of what we're expecting to see for children when it comes to mathematical development and what we can do to aid the, the maths um, understanding further so we can reach those milestones if they're not reached already. So babies aged zero to 12 months, um, babies begin to predict the sequence of events, like running water means bath time. So as soon as they hear running water, they know what's coming next. Starting to understand basic cause and effect. So shaking a rattle will make a, uh, make a noise. They begin to classify things in a simple way. Um, they do understand that some toys will make noise, maybe some won't. Um, if I press a button on that toy, it's going to make a noise. If I twist something on that toy, it's going to make a certain noise. Um, start to understand relative size, so big and small, understanding that they're quite small in comparison, comparison to their parents who are quite big. Um, and as they get older, they begin to understand words that describe quantities such as more, bigger, maybe not using the word enough, but being able to express the word enough as well is an understanding of uh, mathematics. Um, mathematical concepts as well. So moving on to our toddlers who are one to two years old. Um, toddlers usually understand that numbers mean how many. They're able to show us how old they are. If you do ask a toddler how old he is or she is, they're able to put up the two fingers to show that they're two years old um, or three fingers um, to show that they're three. Um, begin reciting numbers, uh, but may skip some of them. So might can try to they do understand the concept of numbers and the sequence of numbers, but they might miss out a few numbers while reciting them. Toddlers understand words that compare or measure things such as under, behind, faster, slower. Um, they're also able to match basic shapes such as triangle to triangle, as you can see in the picture there, square to square, circle to circle. 
Um, the, explosion, the explore measurement and capacity by filling and emptying containers. Is it full? Is it empty? And you know children love water play, especially if it's coloured water, um, sand play, anything for the pouring and filling activities. We're able to introduce um, mathematic, mathematical uh, vocabulary, such as full, empty, half full, pouring, filling. Um, so we start seeing patterns as well. So children um, see patterns in their daily routines um, and even physical patterns. So they understand like if you have um, printed floor tiles, you have to recognize a pattern there. If you do have a patterned um, uh, display, they be able to recognize the pattern in the display. So those are things for toddlers um, stages for maths. For preschoolers, two to three years, um, recognize shapes in the real world. Um, and they can start sorting things by color and shape, size and purpose. They're able to compare and contrast using classifications such as height, size and gender. Um, I'm taller than you, you're shorter than me. They do understand that concept. Uh, they do understand that there may be a boy and the friend may be a girl. Preschoolers are able to count up to at least 20 and accurately point and count to items in a group. Um, and they understand that numeracy stands for number names, such as the number five under, is the same as the word five. If they do understand and can read, they can recognize that those two have the same um, concept. Um, they are able to use and understand spatial awareness. This is important for a number of reasons, including knowing that location, distance, and personal space is important. They can also start predicting cause and space effect. Uh, like what will happen if they drop a toy into a, a tub of water? Will it float? Will it sink? Um, if it's tissue, will it dissolve? Will it open up? So they do understand that when they add things to water, different things will happen. The last stage that I'm going to speak about that is for our early years is our FS and KG children, so our three to five year old children who are a bit more um, have a bit more understanding of mathematical concepts. Um, they will be able to add using their fingers and would know to move to the next hand when the number exceeds number five. And they're able to identify the larger of two numbers. So if they have a five and a two together, they do understand that five is a higher number. Lines of symmetry is a fun way to enjoy maths. Um, you can see in the activity there. So they do understand that they, there is a line of symmetry or using a mirror to see what should be on the other side at that line of symmetry is a fun activity that children really do enjoy. Um, they begin to understand the concept of time. So it's the morning, it's the afternoon, it's time for mom to come pick us up. They do look at clocks and do understand um, time, basic time, like 12 o'clock is lunchtime, it's afternoon time is two, so they can look at the clock and understand time as well. Um, they would be able to understand and put multi-step directions together, such as first, next, then, and understand the meaning of words like unlikely, possible, unlikely. So this is gives you a basic understanding of where your children are at at the moment uh, or where you're trying to aim to get them for the age group that they are in. We understand um, that maths, uh, that Play and maths do go together, um, seamlessly, seamlessly and naturally, in fact, and with simple materials around in the classroom, it's 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 um, very likely that children will be able to bring up across mathematical understanding of concepts during their play. Um, play is a natural way in which children learn, so to be able to incorporate play within their learning um, in the classroom is what we're aiming towards. It's a process through which children explore, investigate, recreate, and come to an understanding of their world. So the more opportunities we um, allow for children to play um, and explore and investigate, the more likely we will come back with positive outcomes and children will be learning a range of different things. Um, and in this case, this, more, this evening would be the concept of mathematics. Play is an activity in which everything that a child knows can be, can, can do is practice or use made used to make sense of what is new. So very practical. Any concept that comes to their mind, they're able to bring it into um, a practical activity. Uh, they can explore. It's all hands-on experiences uh, with simple materials and little planning as early years educators. We can use different games 
carefully resolves open-ended activities to help spark important mathematical ideas and skills within children. Uh, young children show a natural interest in an enjoyment of maths. Um, and research has indicated that long before entering formal schooling, children spontaneously explore and use math mathematics. And what we need to do as educators is provide that environment for children so they're able to explore those mathematical interests that they do have. Um, and many times they actually don't realise that they're doing maths. Um, and that's something that is, um, that's important because what we realise is that many people shy away from the concept of maths. And I think when we bring it in a fun way and it's snuck into our activities, um, children grasp onto those uh, new concepts and new vocabularies and can use them in different um, scenarios and different activities within their classroom. In play and during their daily activities, children often play, often explore mathematical ideas and processes. Uh, they can sort, they classify, they compare quantities, and they notice shapes and patterns within their environment. They would ask questions. Um, they use, I'm going to have a list of um, vocabulary that we would use if we wanted to incorporate mathematics into our activities. Um, we can ask about more, I mean, children would ask us about more or less, they'll compare what's big, what's small, the opposites, um, what came after, what came before. They made a den, who's under the den? Um, we put a blanket over the, the chair. We talk about shapes and sizes. Um, and these are all different ways we can incorporate mathematics into our everyday learning. And it is a fun way to learn. Um, we don't need to have worksheets or have activities that have been directed towards the mathematical concept only. I think what's important for us to have open-ended activities and play-based activities where children can incorporate maths in a wide variety of ways instead of having to just practice how to write a particular number or trace around a particular number. I think what the important thing is and the aim for all is, as educators would be is for children to understand the concept of number, the properties of number, um, so if there's a number three, what does number three mean? Yes, we do practice how to write the number three. It does not have to be on a worksheet. It could be in a sand tray. It could be with shaving foam. Um, it could be with Play-Doh, with pebbles. I will show you some activities in the next few slides where you'll be able to incorporate mathematics into the classroom in a fun way where children don't feel like they're being bogged down to a chair and a desk, um, practicing and rewriting and rewriting the letter and the number um, and doing quite, I would say, quite kind of tedious tasks to make maths um, concept in the classroom. I think having more of a hands-on experience and more of following the child's interest when it comes to those concepts will have more of an impact than having worksheets in the classroom. Um, maths through play, young children are learning maths all the time and through a wide variety of play experience. For instance, in picture you can see that she is in her grocery store, her role play, and that, that activity in itself is incorporating lots and lots of maths. And you've got the numbers, she'll be calculating, she'll be using money. Um, I mean, there's times where you have the grocery store, they're weighing the items. Um, that is a part of mathematics as well. So lots of different mathematical concepts within certain play activities that are set up in the classroom. Um, educators should teach maths in a playful, purposeful and practical way. Again, lots of hands-on hands -on activities. Children will use play and exploration to apply mathematical skills, that's for sure. A large majority of maths work is practical and learning will happen in many different contexts. Context in and outside of the classroom. So maths does not have to be confined within the classroom. You could take it outside and use it in different ways. Uh, counting leaves, counting how many birds you see fly across, um, holding a rock, which one's heavy, which one's light, putting them in order of size, um, having number, number lines and putting them in order outside, playing um, hopscotch is also another way of incorporating play and math together. You, um, so if we analyze um, what we've spoken about now, we can incorporate maths into the classroom through investigations, through play and through real life situations. Um, there should be a collaboration of all these things within the classroom where children are able to explore, enjoy what they're doing and be able to relate what they're doing to their real life situations and real life 
um, have things um, at home, maybe if they go shopping, the grocery store scenario would support them when they go shopping with their mums. Maybe they want to count the money with mummy, um, watch the woman at the till or the man at the till putting in the number amount. How much money do we need to give? Do I have enough? Is it too much? Do I have enough change? Do I get change? Or, um, you know, those are some of the concepts that we can incorporate to allow for real life situations. Children will begin to know and understand early maths language of measurement, shapes, spaces, positions, early numbers and orders and patterns. They will understand the sequence of numbers, um, begin to show and understand the understanding of positional words, such as in, on, outside, under, I've mentioned. Again, as I mentioned, um, show the awareness of times and routines, be aware of shapes and environments, be aware of one-to-one -one con correspondence, acquire new vocabulary, for sure. Um, learn number rhymes and songs. This is a good one to incorporate fun and learning when it comes to maths in the classroom. Lots of different number songs. Um, we have I've mentioned one, two, book on my shoe. We have um, 10, in a, 10 monkeys in a, uh, in a bed, a lot of different things that we can sing to incorporate numbers um, within the classroom when it comes to singing and enjoying rhymes um, and understanding reflections, lines of symmetry. These are just some of the concepts that we're acquiring during play in the classroom. Our aim as educators is for children to be able to explore, uh, to build on the following skills through the mathematical experiences. So all the mathematical experiences that we're providing for children, um, the different vocabularies that we're providing for children, the independence, the exploration, the investigations that we provide within the classroom for mathematical awareness uh, allows children to be brilliant decision makers, allows them to take control and solve problems independently. Um, they, it allows them to develop their thinking processes, develop effective communication skills, lots of group work can be involved, lots of communication, lots of questions, develop collaboration strategies, develop positive dispositions towards learning and develop new vocabulary and mass language, which has also just come up several times now this evening that um, having these mathematical experiences within the classroom will allow for um, certain skills and mathematical experiences to um, come about. Um, I'd like to speak about cooking and baking fun because this is the one that I I do like to mention because I think it's one of the one that's quite a holistic um, activity when it comes to mathematical awareness. Um, baking, even making Play-Doh, we can use recipe cards. So we do look at um, how much or what ingredients we need. So there'll be lots of measuring going on. Um, we will be able to use weighing skills. We'll be able to use um, approximations as to how much we need for the recipe. Teaspoons, tablespoons. These are some of the measurements that we can be using for the ingredients, depending on what, is, what it says on the recipe card. Um, we can estimate. Um, we'll be able to measure. Uh, we are doing counting, how many eggs do we need, um, how many raisins do we need inside our cookies, so you can count them, so lots of counting, let's take away one egg, I only need, we only need two eggs, let's take away one from the three that we have, lots of subtracting, lots of adding, let's add the flour, let's add the baking soda, so we're using the vocabulary during um, a baking activity, salting, so are we doing the dried ingredients first, are we doing the wet ingredients first, so again, sorting them into piles. So that's another concept of maths that's going to be incorporated in, within this activity. Understanding time. So we know that when we put our baking in the oven, it will take up to 30 minutes, 40 minutes. Let's approximate how long it's going to be. And we can use a stopwatch so children understand that time goes by. And this is a time span for how long it's going to take for the baking to be done. Understanding mathematical language again, um, full first, then next. Um, how many cupcake cup, uh, um, cases do we need? Let's count them. I don't have enough batter. What if I divide them up a little bit more to share the batter between the cupcakes equally? So these are all mathematical language skills that are coming in during just this activity of cooking and baking. Um, it's is one of the favorite activities children love doing um, and I think what it does it 
it does incorporate maths into the classroom and even into the home in a fun way. So this is one of the ways that I love to incorporate maths into the classroom. And I do, I do know children enjoy it. Um, and I do know that children take away a lot of um, mathematical uh, vocabulary, lots of mathematical experiences with this activity. Literacy is also a fantastic way to incorporate maths in the classroom in a fun way. So there's many children's books that are actually quite, um, are quite perfect for introducing and reinforcing maths concepts within the classroom. Maybe the child wants to choose a book to read and once you've read the story, you can start exploring the different mathematical concepts further. For instance, the um, very hungry caterpillar. How many different types of fruit did the caterpillar eat? How many apples did they eat? What colors can we color coordinate? Can we see the size of the fruit that our food that the caterpillar ate? So we're categorizing, we're sorting, we're um, counting, we're looking at size, we're looking at um, positional language, we're looking at then, now, and after. What happened in the beginning? What will happen next? What do you think will happen to the caterpillar when it's gone into a cocoon? So again, we're looking at different concepts that are quite mathematical in a fun way. So children love, um, if you have a, um, a book that, that has no words, Maybe you want to count the flowers on the page. Maybe you want to count the birds on the page. Do we have cars? How many cars do we have? How many yellow cars do we have? Are there animals? What type of animals are they? Can we categorize the zoo animals in comparison, in comparison to the farm animals? So there's lots of different ways. Just reading a book can support mathematical enjoyment in the classroom. Are we measuring? Are we predicting? Are we making comparisons? What do you think? What's different between that monkey in the story and what's different between the other monkey in the story? Let's look at different concepts where we're comparing and yet still enjoying the story um, and at the same time incorporating maths into the classroom and enjoying that at the same time. There's a story here that's been mentioned a few times when I did some research on maths, um, fun and maths in the classroom and it's Inch by Inch by Leo Leone, maybe something that you want to invest in for the classroom. Um, and it's basically to avoid being eaten, an inchworm measures a robin's tail. So it begins the story of an inchworm who measures a flamingo's neck, a toucan's beak, a heron's a leg, legs before finally escaping when measuring the 90 year old song. So it's a really nice book. It's a classical book and it can be used to introduce concept of measurements and estimates in a fun way. So maths does not only have to be numbers and worksheets and counting. We can actually incorporate maths in the classroom through various ways, through, through practical activities, through story time, um, through outdoor play. So environments are very, very important when we're looking at um, introducing maths into the classroom. So environments, the environment including outdoor and indoor and emotional environments, they play a significant role in supporting young children's mathematical learning. Um, and as mentioned, we all know that children learn best during play. So we have to carefully plan out our classroom environments, our classroom setups, so they're incorporating a holistic um, a concept to learning. Um, some of our areas will be quite maths orientated, but would also incorporate different areas of learning. For instance, there'd be some literacy there, some sort of you know, children will be able to interact, so there'd be lots of communication skills coming about, there'll be decision-making um, happening. Uh, there'll be so many different things going on within the classroom. So we need to carefully plan um, and do make our areas so they are touching on all different concepts of learning. Um, today, we're looking at the maths concept. So I'll just, I will go through a few slides now and look at the different examples we have to incorporate maths in a fun way in the classroom. Um, our, child, our children can be successful with mathematics, provided that they have opportunity to explore mathematical ideas in a way that makes it makes personal sense to them and opportunities to develop maths concepts and understanding. So we have some of the environments here where, um, and you'll see when I do click through the pictures that you would not see much high tech bought maths equipment. A lot of what we have are, in these pictures are um, uh, equipment or materials that can be bought and be collected um, and they're not very costly so quite easily you'll be able to create 
mathematical environments um, in your classroom. So these are some here where you can see there's wood, um, wooden pallets. Um, you can see there's pebbles, there's shells, there's um, acorns. Uh, there are uh, blocks as well and wing skills. So these are some of the things that will support mathematic, mathematical play within the classroom. Some more uh, ideas here. Um, again, you can see we don't have any high high ranged technical like equipment. We can incorporate math, um, mathematics in the classroom in a fun way, in a very reasonable way without spending lots and lots of money. The first picture you can see there's um, tubes cut up with numbers on them. We have different materials that can be counted. Obviously, if during this, we can also weigh those materials. Are they heavy? Are they light? How, are the, how much the small pebbles weigh? How much the, the big pebbles weigh? Will the big, big pebbles fit in the tubes um, available or would we need to put them in the one in the middle? So there's different things that we can incorporate during the play here. In the next picture, there's some questions there. We've got a different range of materials. Dice and dominoes are a lovely way to incorporate uh, maths within the classroom. Again, a cheap way of introducing the concept. Pebbles, patterns. So we can count pebbles. We can give children patterns that they can follow um, because I mean, having the black and the white separately Given them a range, this is just one idea, and we can have a range of a range of patterns there. Can we stack them without without them falling? If we can't, what do we need to do? Children will come up with lots and lots of questions and lots of exploration. They might attempt to do the tower and realize that the pebbles they've chosen do not allow for balance, um, and then they'll bring it down again and start again. So give them a range of materials, and they will explore and investigate the concept. Um, the the picture with the little boy, um, a simple ex, um, activity with numbers, a bowl of Cheerios, um, and you can use raisins, you can use pebbles, you can use stones, shells, where children can count into the bowl the number that is supposed to be for that bowl. That again is a very hands-on, real-life way to learn counting. The picture in the bottom, weighing skills, so different ways of weighing, um, let's weigh the different materials. If I have more stones and I want an equivalent of those stones weighed, how many sticks do I need to put and so on. So different ways that we can incorporate um, mathematical concepts using weighing skills and odd activities, um, odd materials. Sorry. And mud kitchens are a huge way to incorporate mathematical concepts within the classroom and a really fun way to do it. Um, we make mud pies. How much do I need to use to fill the mud, uh, the mud, uh, the uh, cupcake trays? Do I need more to fill a cake tray? Um, if I'm pouring, if I add water, what happens to the consistency? Uh, do I need more for a small bowl and let, uh, oh, sorry, more for a, a bigger bowl? And why do I only need less for a small one? And so on. So lots of communication, lots of investigation, exploration, and lots of questions that will support mathematical development through, through mud, mud kitchens. Um, also, you can see in the bottom picture, block play is a huge way to incorporate mathematical awareness in the classroom and lots of fun. So the girl is building a tower and she's very carefully estimating what would happen if she puts another block on top. Will it topple? If it topples, what did we do wrong? Can we start again? Do I need the base to be stronger? be lots of questions going on even the younger children with the blocks how tall can i make the tower how big can i make the tower if i use different size blocks can they go on top of each other what happens if i put a small block at the bottom and a large one at the top will it balance all these are different vocabularies that will be incorporated within the classroom setting when doing activities such as block play and with kitchens and um, this is also a fun way to incorporate mathematical awareness within the classroom Cradle, pebbles, um, outdoor, finding items, classifying them, counting them, pom-poms, counting pom-poms and color, color coordinating as well. So you're actually um, having two areas that you're um, touching on during this activity. So all the yellow pom-poms, let's count nine, let's get 
eight blue pom-poms and then also working on your fine motor skills with the pincer or with the picker, uh, the tongue. Um, so you're picking up, you're classifying by color, by number, by quantity. Um, and if the, the, the egg cups become quite full, so we're also looking at full and empty, children may remove half of the pom-poms to be able to fill in the rest. So again, mathematical concepts coming in there. Um, some more activities here, Jump, uh, jumping from one number to the next. Um, hopscotch, again, as I mentioned, is a really fun way to incorporate maths in um, the playground or even in the classroom. Number lines using pebbles instead of using traditional number lines is a fun way to incorporate number sequences within play. Um, we do have um, opportunities where we can bridge mathematical awareness between the home and the setting. And I think it's very important to have sessions with your parents and do speak to them about the different um, areas we can cover within, within um, our activities where we can incorporate mathematical awareness in the classroom and at home. And I think it's important for parents to understand that um, the activities don't come along with high tech, very expensive equipment. They can incorporate maths with, within their everyday life, within the everyday uh, materials that they have available at home. Because um, as you can see in the pictures that I did bring up, these are classroom settings, yet you can see that a lot of everyday items are used to, um, to introduce the concept of um, maths and fun with maths. So maybe learn, we can make parents aware that children can learn about money as they go shopping with their parents. Um, again, as I mentioned, buying things, weighing things, paying, taking change. Um, these are all different ways. Classifying items that they put in their shopping basket. There's lovely ways where parents can incorporate mathematical awareness when they're with their children. Become aware of numbers, counting stairs as they're going up the stairs, counting raisins. Um, how many apples in a bowl, how many red apples, how many green apples. Let's count, and when we put the apples, how many apple pips we can find. Are they the same as the next apple? So lots of mathematical comparisons and awareness in these activities as well for parents to do at home. Um, start to understand the concept of time as they become familiar with the daily routines. Um, the same thing as we do at, at the settings, at the ELCs and the nurseries. Um, what time is it now? It's morning time. What happens after morning time? We do circle time. After circle time, are we going downstairs to play? If we're going downstairs to play, how long do you think we're going to be outside? Give them some kind of awareness of time. The same thing can be incorporated at home. Um, what will happen um, after we've had breakfast? Are we going shopping? Are we going upstairs to go and have some reading time? So have a routine um, and time of day that's awareness for children to... Um, be in control of what's happening during the day at the setting and at home. Um, also incorporate mass language at home. So maybe give them a list of the kind of words and vocabulary that they can use once you're aware of what you can use in the classroom. Do pass on a copy at home so parents are using the same kind of vocabulary during their conversations with children. That will then um, strengthen the mathematical awareness for children both at home and at the setting. Positional language is also important. So behind, in front, on top, underneath, these kind of languages will be used um, within the setting, but having them being used at home as well will also strengthen the knowledge and understanding of positional language. Allow children to set the table. Um, and that's something that I think works really well. How many people are going to eat today? How many knives do we need? How many forks do we need? Um, do we need do we need a napkin for each person? Should we give them two napkins if we have two? How many do we need all together? So those kind of um, introductions to mathematical awareness at home and will support um, their knowledge and skills as well. And then make them more confident when they come to the classroom, you'll actually see the difference. They'll be more confident in um, using your skills within the, the classroom setting. Involve children in household chores. It's a good one to get them involved. Um, color coordinating washing, pairing of socks, counting of shirts. How many shirts do I have? How many socks do I have enough socks, pairs of socks for the week? 
Um, again, counting colors, let's put color coordinate. Um, T-shirts, let's put all the blue, blue T-shirts in one pile, white T-shirts in another pile. Again, sorting and number awareness. I do have a video that I'd like you to see. Again, it will be a roundup of what I've spoken about this evening. Um, and I think what's important is uh, by capitalizing on such moments and by carefully planning a variety of experiences, um, we as educators be able to cultivate and extend children's mathematical sense and interest. Um, and as we're aware, that young children experiences, uh, they fundamentally shape their attitude towards mathematical um, awareness, engage and encourage them in activities um, and different, um, different concepts within the classroom setting will allow them to enjoy maths in the classroom. Um, and again, it's the last thing I'd say, it's really important for you to understand that although your focus might be mathematical awareness and children to enjoy maths in the classroom, you're, you, it won't be independent from other learning. So you would have touched on other concepts as well and other learning experiences as well, such as, as I mentioned, literacy, um, scientific awareness as well, especially when I spoke to you about um, baking, that will incorporate scientific awareness, um, engineering. Um, so it's it's a part of STEM. I did mention STEM last week. So whatever we do within the classroom doesn't come independent of itself. It's actually a um, collaboration of all the different learning opportunities that you will have on the different learning concepts. So we are not isolating maths from anything else. We're just focusing on mathematics within the classroom. Yeah, everything else will come along with it in a holistic manner. Um, Rafi, if you'd like to show the video. Um, a The number of children attending early learning centres in Australia is very low compared to other OECD countries. This will have an impact on the amount of early education that children will have, and particularly with mathematics. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. So having a, a poor start in learning about mathematics is going to affect their ability for later on. There's lots of research that talks about how children, their scores in kindergarten are predictors of what they will achieve later in their life. Early childhood educators can help by having a very play-based approach to mathematics in the early years. Throughout the day there's plenty of opportunities for mathematics to occur. Mathematics is all around us, it's a part of our everyday lives. In most of the experiences that children have there's opportunities for them to be able to measure, there's opportunities for them to be able to think about numbers and counting and think about spatial awareness. Examples of this might be in the block corner where children are experimenting with the blocks. They're building with the blocks and and um, seeing how high they can go, seeing how wide, how tall. Um, and with the teacher interacting, she can use all sorts of language, uh, the language of mathematics, to extend the children's thinking. I just heard a really good word there. It's getting higher. It's getting higher. It's getting taller. Another example might be uh, in the mud kitchen area where children are playing and exploring and using natural materials like sand and water and mud and they're pouring and they're emptying and they're filling and they're looking at how, many, how much more they can put into that container. Or it could be something simple like box construction where children are able to problem solve and plan and think purposefully about how they're going to construct their creation. So for young children we need to forget about doing worksheets and rote learning. For them, maths is a part of their everyday life. Let's bring it back to this everyday notion where they can play and be engaged in meaningful tasks. Play-based learning will have much better outcomes for children in the long term and better outcomes for Australia as well. Thank you, Rafi. That was just a quick short video just to um, uh, re-engage exactly what I've said this evening. I think it's important to, to incorporate a very exciting play-based environment within your classroom um, and to incorporate different open-ended activities where children are able to explore the concept 
of mathematical awareness and vocabulary. Um, and also the, for you to understand that um, when we do these activities, it is a holistic approach. It is not a, um, a single out mathematical approach. Children will be learning holistically while engaging in these activities. So do have some time to reflect on your settings now, just for a few minutes, just take yourself back into your classroom and have a look at what you're doing to support mathematics in a fun way in your class. What would you do that's different um, after having the session this morning? Are there different things that you'd like to incorporate in your classes? Do send them in the chat as well and let me know um, if you've had a thought while this session's been going on as to how you'd like to change your classroom setup to support mathematics in a fun way in your setting. Um, and if so, can you, if you're already doing that, maybe mention some of the different areas you have and how that supported mathematical awareness um, in a fun way. So Rafi, that's me for this evening. I hope we have a few questions. Um, I'm ready to answer them if we have, or any comments from, from the participants as well this evening. I think most of the questions are for me. Um, okay. <laughs> about the certificates. So we did have a, a slight delay in the certificates for the first two weeks we did the sessions. By the time we got the approval from the licensing authorities and from CPD to issue them, we got them on Wednesday and we've started dispersing them. And hopefully before end of the coming week, everybody will get the certificate for all the sessions. So we are very, very sorry, um, but just be a little bit patient with us and we'll get it sorted. Thank you, Rafi. I think there's a question here. Is there any ideas about teaching maths online? So I know that there are some um, online activities where maths can be incorporated within online learning. If it's to do with your online learning directly or if it's activities that you can do, um, I'm not sure whether it's activities that you do as online um, where you'd be a Zoom session. Is that what you're referring to, Madeline? I'm not so sure. If it's... Um, if it's programs, then yes, there are lots of online maths programs for children where they can be quite practically involved in learning maths online. If it's to do with Zoom sessions and online sessions, if anyone's in isolation and so on, then yes, a lot of the activities are able to be done online because the materials that we're using, our materials are readily available in the home. Uh, parents would not be able, to, would not need to go out and buy specific materials and spend lots of money to be able to incorporate mathematical awareness um, during the sessions. So um, for both, I think that's an answer for both of them. So, thank you, Nicola. Um, any more questions, Rafi? I think we've got... Um, I think, yes, here we go. Yeah. Um, any links to use maths and science experiment related play ideas for two to three year old, mostly indoor? So links for ideas, yeah, what I can do is I can actually pass them across to you, Rafi. I've got quite a few links where I took the pictures from. Um, and I can pass those across. Maybe those can be emailed out to participants as well. So just get, I mean, Pinterest is amazing for ideas. If you go onto ideas into practical um, ways to incorporate maths in your classroom, you'll come up with fantastic ideas. Do sift through them because some of them are better than others. Um, but those are some of the links. There's some articles as well that I can pass on links to, so I can pass those on to Rafi um, tomorrow, Rafi, is that okay? And then we yes. can get those, yeah. Thank you. Um, I think it's now with COVID, how are we incorporating this activity? So this is the question that came to me last week is how, during COVID, how are we incorporating some of the messy play activities for the mud kitchens, um, for maybe um, some of the activities that we would do um, as a group? Um, now in, in the setting that I'm managing, we actually invested in IKEA trays, so each child has a IK tray for themselves and we're still able to incorporate activities um, individually for children um, and have their own little packs as well. So if you want to incorporate a mathematics um, session for children, they can have their own little packs as well that they work from. Um, so that's how we are doing it in the setting that I'm working at at the moment. Is there any... Okay, so uh, another question has come up for how to support numbers, number recognition for children with special needs. Now, it's really important for you to understand that a lot of children um, who have extra, who require extra support, 
would prefer more calming and soothing activities. So anything that would be calming and soothing for them, you can have um, number plates that are, uh, the numbers are being stuck on with um, sandpaper because that is sensory. You want to support their sensory awareness. Uh, we can use Play-Doh, there's a Play-Doh, some moon sand, water play. These are all different activities that, that children who require special support do benefit from. So lots of sensory activities, many sensory and calming activities as you can um, will support. And then again, um, it's not using worksheets or numbers, concrete numbers. It's actually using more hands-on experience. And because it can be paced and it's quite driven by the child, the child will not feel overwhelmed or pressured. Um, but yet they'll still be understanding mathematical concepts during their play. Uh, doing um, basic language, don't use um, big words or heavy words or difficult words for the children. I think just basic language to begin with and just repeat it several times over while you're playing with the children and it will it will stick. Um, so that's something that we, we like to do with children who require special support. The next question is for me. So just to also um, clarify, there will not be a test for every session. There are no tests for the sessions. There will be um, sort of a, a questionnaire or a quiz to fill. Assessment, yeah. Yes, assessment at the end of the program, which has bits of every session and that you only need to answer if you want the cash in those certificate. But for the CPDs, there is no test required. Thank you. Is there any? I think there's one for you, Shamila, about is it, uh, can we use Play-Doh during COVID? I think that's more of a question we have to check with the licensing authority. Yeah, no, it's, it's okay. I can probably answer, yeah. I can support you with that one. I can, you know, how we're doing it in the setting. Um, yeah, well, usually what we used to do previously is have a, a Play-Doh box that um, the Play-Doh used to go back into and it was a collective activity. Now, what we've started doing, and I think some of the other settings are doing, is having, I've got little plastic jars for each child. So they have their own Play-Doh, and that Play-Doh is changed as often as it needs to be. So every child would have their own Play-Doh piece to play with. And the same with them, um, uh, it's a similar concept as the individual trays. So we still are incorporating Play-Doh play with just giving each child their individual Play-Doh um, play ball or Play-Doh piece, for instance. So you can still incorporate Play-Doh. Um, do we have any more? Any links to the links we can give? I think that's it. Do we have any more, Rafi? I've really no, enjoyed I, this session. Yeah. yeah, I think that is it. And it's almost time. So I would like to thank everybody for attending. Hope everybody found this session to be useful and we were able to give you some ideas to be able to take back to your establishments. Shamila, thank you very much for your time. Thank As you usual, so you were amazing. It was a wonderful session. Thank you. Have a thank lovely you. evening, everyone. Um, we'll see everyone next Saturday. Yes, next Saturday. Thank you. All right. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.